Some great businesses in Britain have had their gestation in one of our universities. Where better to develop and refine an idea? Well, next out of the lift is Cheshire-based Tim Morgan, whose invention started out as a final year project at uni. Hello Dragons, my name is Tim Morgan and I'm Managing Director of the Mountain Trike Company. I'm here today to pitch for £100,000 in return for a 5% share in the business. Our product is the revolutionary Mountain Trike All-Terrain Wheelchair. It uniquely gives wheelchair users the freedom and independence to access and enjoy the countryside. The patented lever drive, steering and suspension systems enable the user to ride over a wide variety of terrain such as deep mud, snow, sandy beaches, in comfort and safety and the whole time with clean hands. And it's this versatility that has really appealed to our target market as in the same chair they can go for a country ride and pop into a pub for lunch or go for a family cycle ride or, if they're feeling even more adventurous, go and summit Mount Snowden or Ben Nevis. No other manual wheelchair on the market offers this level of off-road performance combined with practicality and comfort. The Mountain Trike has been very well received by our target market since we started trading in August 2011, and we've generated a turnover of £360,000 and are now at break-even. In addition to a wide variety of individual customers worldwide, we have also sold direct to the British Army, who have a fleet of five trikes at their main rehab unit, Headley Court, where the injured soldiers use them to aid in their recovery. I feel this is an attractive proposition for an investor, as there's the opportunity to double your money in the next two to three years. I also feel there are considerable social and ethical benefits to being involved with this UK-made product, that is having a fantastic difference to the lives of wheelchair users worldwide. And if you'd like to speak to one of our very first customers, we have someone here today who can give you his first-hand experience of how the trike has benefited his life. A robust pitch from crew-based Tim Morgan. His mountain bike wheelchair hybrid needs a sizable £100,000 cash injection in return for just a 5% stake. Peter Jones wants to put the wheels of interrogation into motion. I, I, I will come back to something in a minute, and it's the £2 million valuation. But before I do, could we see your advocate in action? OK, sure. Good afternoon, Dragons. Hello. Hi there. What's your name? My name's Richard. Richard, hi. Hi. C could you give us a quick demonstration? Of yep. If you've got any rough terrain, I could go over. <laughs> and how fast could it go, Richard? Um, Is this about the speed? About four, five, four to five miles an hour. Wow. Do you feel safer in it than a normal wheelchair? Is that one of the... Yeah. I haven't fallen out of this one yet. Uh, I've fallen out of my regular wheelchair several times. <laughs> there isn't anything that I don't like about it. Um, I mean, it helps me to live my life um, in the way that I want to live it. Richard, thank you very much. Okay. You're Thanks, welcome. Richard. Thank you, very thank much. you Richard. <laughs> Richard's seal of approval has made a good first impression on the dragons. But Peter Jones wants to get back to the thorny issue of how much Tim thinks his company is worth. What is in your mind about valuing this, at this stage, your business at £2 million? 
first of all, I'm kind of recognising that we're, we're no longer a startup. We're an early stage company. We've been trading for a year and a half. We're also just breaking even now and starting to enter into profitability. So we've just got American approval. So this is a, a very large market for us. We feel that the, inter that the overall addressable market is around half a million. So the, the actual unit figures where we, we've sold so far and that we've projected in our plans are a very, a, a very modest percentage of that. For this year, we've projected 70 units and a turnover of 282,000. For, ne for next year, we're forecasting a turnover of 406,000 and 100 units. And how much do you make on each unit? At present, the manufacture cost is £2,500 and retail is 3995 Tim's impressive sales projections have revealed a potential money-making opportunity. But Duncan Bannatyne suspects he's priced himself out of the market. I, I was pushed to wheelchair last weekend. Okay. And it's got two wheels, a bit of cloth between the mill. I don't believe for one minute it costs that sort of money. Okay, a very basic wheelchair would be a couple of hundred pounds, but that would last not very long. You couldn't really go out and yeah, go very far in it. Okay, that, that's fair, but what I'm trying to do is, is to see what you're comparing your pricing with. Yep. So what's the next one above that? What? So really then, you, you probably there is a maybe more entry level type things which are sort of reasonably lightweight, but if someone is paralysed from the waist down, for example, they will need something like that for their kind of getting about their house to, to go into mm -hmm. around the office. It's small, it's lightweight, but it's limited to smooth ground. This really is offering a whole different range of capabilities. How big is this market, do you think? In the UK, there are 1.4 million wheelchair users. What's their buying pattern, a wheelchair user? Traditionally, they may buy from a, the, a local dealer or what we're seeing increasingly now is that with the, the, the increase in sort of web sales and things like that, that people are wanting to source more directly. It sounds, I mean, to be honest, if I was buying a, a bike, if I was buying, certainly if I was buying a wheelchair, I'd want to sit in it. Yeah, so is sure. that not an issue when you're trying to sell online? Basically, we, we, we still have a lot of first-hand contact with the customer. So we go out on personal home demos. We have a hiring scheme where people can hire for a week or a weekend, try it at home for a longer period. And a lot of the time, that's a nice sort of try-before-you-buy method as well. Right. The entrepreneur seems to have thought of everything. Piers Linney wants to know whether that includes protecting the design of his product. It seems to me that somebody else, not easily, but could come up with a wheelchair with levers and brakes and steering that's probably as effective as yours, but maybe not designed in quite the same way. The patents I, I wrote were very broad for a start, so they covered lots of different options. So someone couldn't, for example, just put the steering wheel at the front and get around it. So nobody else can copy that in any way? No. I should point out they are UK patents. Right. So I fired them when I was still a student. At that stage, I was only able to afford the UK patent coverage. And since then, we've, it's been through the various stages, so we couldn't extend it to be international. It's just a shame, but it's a case in point of how not to protect intellectual property. Criticism of Tim's patent. Could the wheels be starting to come off his otherwise perfect pitch? Kelly Hoppen wants to drill down into the structure of Tim's business. When you say we all the time, how many people is in the company? Myself, I have a 47% share in the business. I have two good friends from university who helped in the development and commercialisation. They have 10% and 3% respectively. And then the two other people who kind of helped me get to, get to market and get to where we are now are our manufacturing director and he has 20% and also our, our chairman who also has 20%. Kelly Hoppen has unearthed some crucial information about the complicated share structure of Tim's company. Deborah Meaden wants to know how the revelation affects a potential deal. Have you come in here today with the other directors agreeing to any form of dilution? Yes, we've agreed 
the, the 5% share is the, the most that we can offer between us and we've also agreed how that would break down. Myself, I'd lose 3%. And so the, there the, would the be thing. no point in me making you any offer above 5%? I'm afraid not, no. Really, for, for the stage we're at and the amount we've all put into it already, we can't go any higher than that. Well, I'm going to. OK. And the reason I'm going to make you an offer, I, 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 I want to force that out and for you to think that through. Or are you saying that they haven't given you the... Are you telling me that they haven't given you any rights to go above 5%? It's between all of us. We've agreed that that's the most we can offer today. Gosh. I wish I'd known that at the beginning. Because I think you're great, I think it's great, and I think the valuation is crazy. And if you're honestly saying that 5% is it, I just could not reach that valuation. And is that right? So if I offered you now all of the money for 15% of the business, take it? I'd, I'd really sorry, but I'd, I'd have to say no to that. I am so sorry about that, because I would have loved to have got on board with this, but I've got to tell you, at 5%, I can't do it. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I'm out. The last-minute disclosure of his company shareholder breakdown has lost him his first dragon. Which way will the others go? I feel stupid not asking the question earlier. Um, two million pounds valuation is, is bordering on, on the delusional. So, Tim, you've made it uninvestable because you're unwilling to move on the percentage, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to say that I'm out. OK, thanks, Peter. Tim, it's not an awful lot I can add to that, other than I do think you're incredibly inspiring and I think it's an incredible product, but I want to wish you luck and I'm sure you'll do really well with it, but I'm afraid I'm out. OK, thank you. I think what you've done is fantastic, but I'm sorry, Timothy, I'm out. OK, thanks, Duncan. Four dragons bow out of the deal. Only Piers Linney remains. That was going to make you an offer. I, I thought when you were talking about we've all agreed about a percentage, that was negotiation. But given Deborah's made you a reasonable offer and you've rejected it, um, I wouldn't be able to make an offer any better than that. So I think you're fantastic. Love the product. Amazing what you've done on your own, literally. But I'm afraid your valuation's killed it, so I'm out. OK, thanks. Well, what we should have said, really, with that evaluation was on your bike, but we didn't. On your trike. On your trike. OK. A frustrating conclusion to a pitch that had such promise. In the end, it was Tim's inability to negotiate that dashed his investment dreams. And he leaves the den with nothing. Sad. How disappointing. Two million pounds for that. Wow. But good guy, good product. Yeah. Good luck to him.